I love these couple days after it snows. Good and new. My name is Wyatt, and welcome back to the New Hampshire Vintage Channel. Now, here on the channel, I'll travel all over New England, a whole bunch of different states to find the right project. If that's snowmobiles, four wheelers, three wheeler, trying to find one of those eventually, go karts. As long as it's fun and fast, I'm in. Now, today is no exception. I am traveling to New Hampshire, staying in state. <laughs> Uh, we're actually going to Keene, New Hampshire. Now, to the probably 20 of you watching that are from this state, Keene is far. Um, if you're anywhere else besides Keene, it's not hard to get to, but it's just a long ride. That being said, it's mostly not a back road, but it's not a highway. It's a long, windy road. Beautiful, but it's just far. Now, Keene is a beautiful town uh, from the restaurants. They have a beautiful college. It's a fun town to be in, and I'm actually excited to go today. So we have a project we're picking up, and I don't know if he'll let me film. I try to be polite and not film people's houses or shops. I get it. I understand. If I could film, I will. But if not, I'll see you guys after I pick this thing up. I'll give you a quick little tour of it and then we'll bring it to the shop, see if we can get it running and yada, 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 you know the rest. All right, let's get going. It is cold out there and it's saying it's around zero degrees with a wind chill of negative 14. That's chilly. Anyways, this is a 1973 Articat Panther. Now, the guy I got it from, he said he got it in a package deal with a, I believe, 70 two or 71 a little more desirable looking sled this one not so much but it deserves love and to be back on the trail this apparently the owner had it for around not not the guy i got it from the guy he got it from chain reaction had it for around 30 years and when I came across this on Facebook Marketplace, I had to have it. I mean, I'll bring you guys in. It is complete and it is remarkable. I mean, I, yeah, it has its wear and tear and it has its little bit of rust here and there, but for 73, I, it, I, I'm scared to touch it. I mean, it's a lot, a lot nicer than what I'm usually used to working on. So let me bring you in and we'll go through this thing together. I, besides just a quick glance at a few little things, I haven't gone through this sled. I wanted to make it so it's genuine and real. So let's go through this and see what we can find. If there's any goodies, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. And we'll go from there. So here's a quick view. Now I haven't washed this. I haven't, I haven't touched it. I picked it up a couple days ago and by the quick tests I did when I was at the place, I knew it needed some things and I'll show you that in the future. But I was waiting on a rebuild kit for the carb. And this carb in particular is one that I've never worked on before. So we're gonna learn a few things together and make some mistakes together. Look at this seat. I mean, come on. Not a rip. That's just debris. The back part of the seat. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There's a little 
little tear right there. Going on to the cowl. There's some cracking in the, what is this, like a gel? I don't really know the exact term for it. I'm sure you guys can correct me in the comments. But either way, you know what I mean. I mean, it is immaculate. A little bit of bubbling and age on the, the white bezel there. Skis, yes, there is some surface rust coming about. The windshield. A little starting to fade, but still has, still has some clarity to it. Maybe we can bring that around. It is a 440, which is cool. Does have the key still with it. Look at this light switch. I mean, that is solid. Choke. Does not work. It's seized. Brake. Seems like it works. Has a little grab to it. Throttle. No, oh, seized. Well, those were the two things that I quickly checked when I was there, you know, just giving it a quick glance over. Kill switch. Now, let me show you this gas tank. This is one other thing I checked, because usually these things are complete rusted out. Look at the sidewall of that tank. Now, there is, there is gas in it. We're going to have to drain out. Oh, there's the line. But, I mean, looking at it, see if we can, no, we can't see the back. But seeing that sidewall, is come on that clean is immaculate so come on focus there we go so that was a plus the track does have the original flap you know it's a uh, not the rubber track that a lot more modern sleds have. It does have the cleats, but it looks like they are the, they're all there. Track could be a little better, but it doesn't seem too, too bad. Underneath, there is some rust, surface rust, but nothing, nothing that's super noticeable that seems like it's giving me a red flag. A lot of leaves. Luckily, it's not those plastic drive cogs that always chip away. Seems like Articats have that problem. This one is, I forget the name of them, but they're that different type that grip into these little stubbies. And they seem like they last forever. If you guys can comment what those are called again, I just forget. It can be a dub sometimes. All right, let's get under the hood. First, let's check this. Is there anything in here? I did not check this. Nothing. Boo. Okay. All right, let's check under the hood here. Now, this has what the guy was telling me called a whisper. Looks like it's an air intake system. I don't really know what it does, but we're going to find out. That let's see, is a Walboro carb. Never worked on one of those before. I've worked on Tillisons. I've worked on Bakunis, as you've seen in previous videos. I've never worked on one of these. And when I was going through this quickly at the guy's place, I could see the cable is moving, kind of, my phone wanted to stop being blurry. You could see the cable is moving, but it looks like the carb is what's locked up. So we're going to have to dive into that. And it's the same thing that goes for the clutch. So 
I don't think we have to replace any cables right now, but we will have to definitely dive into this. Here's the rest of the motor. Articat. The exhaust seems like it's all there. I don't see any cracks or anything of that nature, but we'll find out if we get this thing going. Let's see if there's any weak spots. Let's move over. I love the tail lights. That's really cool. Chain case, we'll have to check. Clutches, we'll have to dive into it a little more, but it looks like it's, it is going to need a belt, which I'll probably have to order, but at least if we can get it running today, we can use that belt just to get it going, and then we'll get all that replaced. But everything looks like it's there and complete and not in bad shape. That Johnson I had, those clutches were rusty. And it took me a while to try to clean them up, but they're nowhere, even after me cleaning them, nowhere near as clean as that looks. So, that's kind of a quick overview. Let's start diving in and see what else we have here. So, diving into this in engine bay. Oh, there's a, looks like a dryer sheet. Looks like it didn't really do much to, oh, yep. Yeah. We got a mouse house. Looks like it didn't really do much to keep them out. So I'm going to have to vacuum out all those. <laughs> My vacuum decided to quit sucking. And <laughs> it sucked up, I guess, in there. So... Um, Ibuprofen tablets, gluten free. Huh, interesting. Never found one of those before. It's a little better. It's about as much as I can get for now until we start taking some. Uh, bigger components off where I can get the vacuum in there a little better. But at least it's not all up in my face and breathing it in and all that stuff. I hate mice. All right, let's uh, take off this Whisper air intake and see what that's all about. See if we can expose the carb a little more. Oh, first, I forgot. Let's do a compression test before we get into all that. All right, let's dive into that. Oh, that one was loose. Sure, some of you have seen my hat. Um, I am a fan of the Vice Grip Garage channel. And I do like cars as well. That's just way out of my budget to start working on. Hopefully down the road, we'll find an old car. We can start working on stuff like that. But for the time being, vintage sleds, stuff like that is what we're going to dive into. And as... Uh, Derek would say from Vice Grip Garage. Wonder what Vice Grip Garage is doing today. Oh, the R9 and GK. I need to get stock of these. Just have a ton of them because it seems like a lot of sleds use these car uh, use these carbs. A lot of sleds use these spark plugs. Let me just put this one off to the side. Let's see if this one was loose. Yeah, so, wow. This one was loose too. So, the guy I must have got it from must have done a compression test and the general quick check over. But these plugs do look old. I'll bring them up to you guys real quick so you can see them. BR9 EYA. That's the first plug. That's the second plug. Okay, let's get this all situated and I'll zoom you guys in. 
see what we have for compression. Leave there. So this is going to be the right side cylinder. We'll check first. Okay. Let's see if I can figure out where to put this so you guys can see it. I'm trying to get better with my lighting. There we go. Let's see if that stays put. And I'm going to do throttle open. Uh, I can't do throttle open. Um, it ceased. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have to do a throttle close compression. Shouldn't be that big of a changeover, but I usually try to like to do throttle open. And we'll see where we're at. So this is the right side cylinder. Here we go. Oh my God. Ooh. This is really hard to pull. Oh, way below 120, but it is closed. So I'm going to do the benefit of the doubt saying that something with the carb is just, it's hard to pull this thing. Um, like it feels like it has too much compression, but we'll figure out why it's doing that. Let's move it over to the left side cylinder. I'm connected to the left cylinder and I know it's probably going to be less because like I said the throttles stuck and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on but let's just try it and even if it's like the other one like I think it was what 110 or something I'm still gonna dive into the carb and all that I think there just might be stuff being seized up that's just not helping it's more me trying to pull it than anything it's just very tight I'm probably doing this backwards. I probably should be diving into the carb first and doing that. But you know what? I'm lazy and I'm already here. I'm going to see if I can at least get something, even with it pulling very hard. Get this out of the way. All right, we'll start with the right side cylinder again. All right, we're going to leave it at that and see what that does. You see anything? Forgot to turn the key on. Let's try that again. I did take it off its dolly so it doesn't move as much, hopefully, trying to pull start it. All right, we decided we're going to change gears for a second. I'm going to get this air box off just to see what's going on. How do you guys do your revivals or maintenance on these old sleds? Do you go through carb first? Do you guys check compression first? What do you guys do? Holy crap, that's a long bolt. Look at that. Most of the sleds I work on don't even have an air intake. So I know there's no bad foreign debris going through. Okay, this bolt has a big flange on it. I'm sure you are you are cat guys are laughing at me right now. But I've never worked on something with this much technology in it. And by technology, I mean just a 
this is a different airbox type setup that Puma I have that if you saw in previous. Okay, and that one's a short one. Ooh. That's gunky. Let me give you a. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take this off to see what's behind it and then we can diagnose this thing. I am going to change out all these fuel lines, so I don't really care about these. So I'm just going to rip them right off violently. There we go. One. And two. Oh, that guy actually came right off. Okay, so that guy goes to the engine. So that must run, that must be a fuel pump up top there. Because that runs right into the engine. Okay. This guy does. Okay, never see that again. Okay. Well, you can see the cables aren't gummed up. They are moving, that's the throttle, and that's the choke. And just by taking that off, I got that one freed up. But I'm gonna keep taking this off. This one's still stuck. So I'm gonna need to try to get those bolts there. That's gonna be a little bit tough. What are these screws? I don't know what those do. I'll find out though. <clears throat> That's the easy one off. Now we're going to get to the hard one with all the mechanisms in the way. This is not looking good, guys. Look at all that crud. That was before me because it was seized to shut, so none of this stuff passed through the carb. Oh. Much as a nice of a sled it looks on the outside, it does not look good on the inside. You might have to take the intake off and try to clean that. You might have to go further. Might turn into a full rebuild. That's not good news at all. But I got the carb off which is also very dirty. Uh, before I dive into this carb, I'm gonna do a damage assessment if I can. Um, I'll start by getting this cover off. Let's see if I can find a screwdriver. All right, guys, let's dive in here. Let's see what's inside. Okay, all right. Just bring you guys in here. Actually, a little bit, but 
doesn't look that bad in there. Gasket seems all right. Let's see if I can get a better. The walls are okay. A little bit of. No, right there. Okay, that's. That's like, oh, it's like wiping off some sort of gook. Try to clean those up a little bit. I'm going to take the other one off just to check it as well. But a little bit of carbon on top, but that's really not bad at all. Exhaust doesn't look bad. Seems like maybe just crud got in the intake, which I could take off and clean. And see how the carb is. Maybe we can save this. Taking the other one off. Do got a little bit of crud on the side, but there's no major scoring. So I'm going to clean these up, lube them, and get the heads back on, get them torqued down. And we're going to take off this intake, clean it, and then move on to the car. But it's actually not as bad as I thought. I mean, yeah, it could be better but i've definitely seen a lot worse so i'm gonna get this cleaned up get it all lubed down and we'll move on to take this intake off which that looks like that's gonna be a lot of fun okay so i cleaned each cylinder very well i sprayed it down with uh, wd-40 after and they are all lubricated and now we are actually pulling very smoothly i don't want to pull too hard because there's still some cook in this intake so we're going to take this off get this all cleaned up and then we can get these spark plugs out of the way just put them in place to rest um we get this intake off get it clean we'll put it back on make sure all the gaskets underneath is clean get rid of all this gook on it we will start taking these off. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like six bolts. And that should come right off. So I'm going to get that going. And then we will see what it looks like after. Okay, so I'm on the bench. I got the intake. This thing is cruddy. Wow. So I'm gonna try to clean this up best I can and try to get the inside as clean as I can. I'll try to get this gasket off. Um, I do not have any of these gaskets. I didn't plan on going into the intake. I'm going to try to take this off as nice as I can. We will get this all cleaned up. And wow, look at all that. That looks like belt material instead of, yeah, I think it is. I don't think that's, yeah, that's definitely belt material. All right, I'm going to get this cleaned up and I'll be back in a few hours. <laughs> I think it's going to take a while. Okay, so after a lot of scrubbing and a couple rounds through the ultrasonic cleaner, I did manage to clean this up pretty good. There's still some, there's just a little bit of residue from the, I did rinse it and blew it out of there. I couldn't get everything. Um, that's kind of just seems like it's stuck on there, but it is clean. There is no, chunks or anything like that i should redo gaskets or should redo i should get new gaskets uh to put on the back here but i don't have any see that one sorry starting to peel up i don't have any um i could order some but that would take a few more days of waiting so i am going to clean these up best i can maybe put a little bit of high heat um, RTV or gasket on there. Um, I know it's not the right thing to do. I understand that. Yelp me all you want, but I'm just going to make do with what I have. And 
it still ends up leaking, I'll do a quick test once it's on there and see if it's still leaking and so it's not running right. It's just six bolts plus the two carb bolts. And I'll get this back off and I'll put the gaskets on once they're ordered. So let's just get this sled running and going or see if we can anyways. Made in Japan. Okay, intake is back on, all cleaned up. So now, let's get this crusty thing off and do what I've been dreading all video and see if we can clean this out. So this is a kind of a post edit video. Uh, I just wanna explain what's gonna happen in the next segment. In this next segment, I take apart the Walboro carb about 90% and I ended up breaking a housing or the little, uh, a little needle housing. I'll show you in the video when we get to that, that point. Um, it might have been a blessing in disguise because that carb was very corroded. So I'm currently searching for a new one. I might have a few that I can grab from. So we'll do a part two. And in the part two, I will do a full disassembly on the carb we get and a full reassembly so we can still learn together how those carbs get put back together. So just take the next segment with a grain of salt. Um, I will explain in it exactly what happened and we'll see you in the, we'll see you in the next segment. Okay, I got this really gross carb off on the bench. Try to easily peel. Yes. Wow, okay. Look at that. So the choke is free. Like that's as much as that goes. So there's a little pin there. Obviously we have flathead screws down there. Now, I am not going to lie to you guys. Um, I am gonna look up a guide. I kind of did some brief homework and I found a YouTube channel. I will show, show it and give them a shout out. Um, this guy takes apart a whole Walboro carb like it's nothing and puts it all back together. I've never done one of these before, so I'm not ashamed to say it. I am gonna look look up everything about these, and then we will take this apart together. And right out of screen, I have my TV. Uh, I'm gonna be using that a little bit as a guide. And hopefully we can learn together how to take one of these apart and put it back together. And for the guys and girls out there that already know everything about these. I'm gonna apologize in advance because I'm sure I'm gonna make a, I'm sure I'm gonna make some mistakes. And but that's how you learn. So let's dig in. So we're gonna start by taking off the float bowl through these four screws here. Oh, yeah, a lot of crud. Wow, look at that. While I was working on cleaning the car, my dog stopped by to say hi. This is my dog, Buckles. He's a one-year-old black lab. Hi, oh, Buckles, what are you doing, big guy? He's like, what can I eat in the shop? <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Hi. Little boy. Yeah. Little boy. Huh? Little boy. Yes, you are. Ah. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm going to take out our, our pin here that's holding our floats. And do that. Let's take a pair of pliers and we're going to pull from this side like that. That off to the side. And this guy, for future reference for Wyatt, rewatching this because I'm sure I'm not going to know how to put this back together. It goes just like that inside. Okay. Our floats. Looking at them here, might be a little hole there, but I don't think so. They look like they're in pretty good shape. We'll test that though. Okay, I'm going to flip that over, and here's our needle, okay, put that guy over there, we got our seat down there, but we'll get to that in a second, we got to take this little lever off, so, oh, in camera, looks like I'm going to take a little punch and see if I can pop it out. After I stop hitting the camera, we need to take this little guy out. So this little pin has an indent on this side, or sorry, an indent on this side. So it comes out a certain way. So it comes out the way of the, towards the motor. So that would be your air intake, air would flow through that way. And then obviously come out into your engine intake or your yeah, pretty much your intake on your engine. So I'm going to take my punch and just slowly try to get a good angle for you guys. I'm not going to take a huge hammer to it or anything. I'm just going to use the top of my screwdriver just like that. Okay, and boom. See how it has a little indentation. So when this goes back in, you want the little indentation to be facing towards, oh, never see that again, facing towards where you bolt on the carb to the engine towards your intake. Okay, next we're going to pull out our seat, 5 sixteenths, okay, and I guess underneath there's a little gasket in there, see here, so you're going to want to get that out too, all I keep getting is crud. So let me grab a pick, a better pick than that, smaller. Okay, got it out. That goes with those guys. Stuff keeps calling out, so I'm just gonna keep, try to keep, I try to keep my workspace clean. As I can. I just don't like working on a whole bunch of grub. And okay, so next we're gonna take we're gonna flip the carburetor over. We are just working on this side. This little needle needs to come out, but it seems like it's a little bit jammed in there. It's, it's spinning, but it feels springy, like it's attached to something. In the video, he pulled it right out. So I'm gonna try to dive in a little more before I break something on that. But now we kick the camera and then we're going to take these four screws out. Now this is the fuel pump side. And if you see, it looks like someone's already been in this thing before. That one's actually pretty good, but you can see a couple of those have already been kind of stripped out and they don't, they don't feel super tight where it usually makes that little pop sound that I always like. Like on that video of the uh, 
the video of the citation or the um, the formula that we just did with Eric. Okay, I'm gonna take this guy off, set this guy down as gently as I can because it's still a bunch of pieces. So this little guy, you have your diaphragm, your gasket underneath. I'm just keep these together. I do have a uh, gasket kit for this. And then you have a little fuel pumper with the little teeth go in and it sits like that. So I'm going to put this guy off to the side. And there we have it. We have a little intake there. I'm going to put this whole thing right in the ultrasonic cleaner. Hopefully it cleans that out and I'll blow that out of there. But that's the top piece. Okay. So this piece sits. There's a little notch. Sits just like that. And that's where your choke and your throttle go to meet up with all your choke and throttle mechanisms. This comes off. Underneath you have another gasket, diaphragm, but you can see it's layered like a Tolison is. Take that off. And there's little notches, joints together. Then you have your gasket and your little diaphragm that you might need to scrape off with a putty knife scraper. Luckily mine's just coming right off, no problem. Just like that. Now I'm going to leave this kind of together, just so I don't, I'm just going to loosen everything up, but I'm going to leave it. These little plugs here, I'm just going to leave in. They look very clean. Um, I might just take them off real fast when I put it in the cleaner, but I'm going to oops, get confused. There we go. Like that. I'm just going to put this kind of back closely how it was just so I don't mistake myself and for the time being because we still have more to dig in. So just get the, all those peeled apart and before you throw them in the cleaner you can then take pictures, record yourself, how it goes back, how it goes on, look up guides. So next we're going to pull the needle like I was Seeing in the video, he pulled it out that way, but I'm gonna pull mine out this way. You can see, look at the difference. Wow. And then beneath there, that's a spring. So we are going to need to slowly work this little guy out. And make sure it doesn't go across shop because I'll never see this thing again. There we go. Just go easy. Take your time. There's that little spring. Okay. Move on to the next one. Okay. Next we're going to take out our choke. All it is, it's just pressured on there. He says this little ball can pop out. So just be careful with that. I don't know if it's like in there, if it's Mine came out in one piece, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Just lay it down right there. Next, we're going to take out this little spring, and this whole guy pops out. But first, I'm going to unscrew the throttle body, if I can. This is what I'm worried about. Yes, freed up. Oh, I thought that was going to be corroded on there. Take out this little screw, which I will clean up. Okay, took out that little screw. Now we need to undo this clip. Don't want to, there we go. Just like that, there's a little clip there. So I have good news and bad news. Good news is I got the I got the um, 
throttle needle out or throttle um, casing or rod per se. I got that slit out. I got the I got the actual um, this slides in here the uh, much like the uh, the cover plate or whatever. I got that out very carefully, slid that out, but I broke this on the way out. Um, to be fair, it was very loose already. It was pretty much held on. Just so much corrosion. So we're going to have to find a new body or uh, we're going to have to find a new needle casing. So this got put on hold temporarily. Um, can't really do anything with that. I'm going to look around, see if there's uh, parts I can get. So we'll do a part two, and on the part two, we'll get this all put back together, and we'll have the new hardware, and we'll see if we can get the sled running. So mistakes were made on this sled. I dove into it a little bit the wrong way. Probably should have took the airbox off, checked all that, but seeing how pretty much clean it was on the outside, I thought it'd be pretty clean on the inside, but you live and you learn. Anyways. Next video, we need to address the carb. I have it all taken apart, but a little piece broke on the inside. So I'm either gonna just find a carb that's in a little bit better shape than that one, or if I can find the parts, I'll try to clean this one the best I can. I'm kind of leaning towards trying to just get a better condition carburetor. This one's really bad, as you saw in the video. But we also need to address a spark issue. We do not have spark um, off camera. My girlfriend came in and watched the spark plugs as I reefed on this thing, and we don't have any spark. So I will get new spark plugs for it. We will address the spark issue next video, get the carb put back together, and hopefully we'll have this sled running and we can take it for a ride. Right now it is very cold out, so even if I got this thing running today, I would not be riding it. So, unfortunately, we have to end right there. So keep a lookout for part two. Be out in the next couple videos. As soon as I get the parts in or a new carburetor, I'll be recording immediately. And, yeah, uh, hopefully some of this taught you a few things. Uh, do, as, do as I say, not as I do. And I will go back and into an in-depth carburetor rebuild and put back together. I did show a little bit of it, but I will take apart even after, even after I get the new one, I will take everything apart again and put it back together so we learn how a wall barrel gets put back, taken apart and put back together. Um, I won't skip out on that for you guys, but we're just at a standstill at the moment. So, yeah, anything else? Nope, I don't think so. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hopefully see you in a few days. Man, I hate when I break stuff.